It snowed this morning, but it's clear now, so I've gotten out my Dobsonian telescope. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is What Can You Expect to See in a Dobsonian Telescope, Part 5, Advanced Targets in Spring. If you'd like to see the earlier episodes in this series, I'll provide the links to those videos in the description below. For this presentation, I've selected some deep sky objects that are suitable for Dobsonians of about six inches or more in aperture. If you have a tabletop or smaller four inch Dobsonian, you can probably see most of these, but some of them will be a challenge. We'll be looking at Bootes, Coma Berenices, Corvus, Hydra, and Virgo. Let's start with Bootes, the herdsman. It looks like a kite on its side, and the brightest star of Bootes is Arcturus, the fourth brightest star in the night sky. You find that by going from the handle of the Big Dipper and arcing to Arcturus. Now we're going to look at a showcase double star, Izar, also known as Epsilon Bootis. Izar means loincloth or girdle. It was discovered to be a double star in 1779 by William Herschel, and he described it as very beautiful. The primary star is a KO giant star that has exhausted its hydrogen fuel and its magnitude 2.6, and it's 400 times brighter than our sun. The companion is magnitude 4.8, and they're separated by only 2.9 arc seconds. So it's a tight double. Once you center Izar in your eyepiece, you'll need to magnify it to at least 100 times, if not 200 times, to split it into its component parts. So when it gets dark, I'll see if I can split it. I couldn't split it the other night. I think the seeing has to be really good to split a double star that's that tight. So I'll be back after it gets dark and we'll try to split Izar and then we'll go on to some other targets. Okay, it's 9.20 p.m. It's not even remotely dark, but Arcturus is so bright that I can see it. So there's Arcturus and you're gonna go nine degrees north east to that next brightest star, Azar. Wow, I split it, even though it's not even dark. That's the thing about double stars. It can be light polluted and you can still try for double stars. So they're nice objects to go for, but I see why I couldn't split it the other night. I was not magnified nearly enough. Forget about a hundred times. You need to go up to 200 times at least to split it because the secondary star is so tiny and so close. The bigger one looks kind of orange to me and the little one looks snowy white and they're tight, but give it a try. Eyes are a beautiful double star in Bootes. I agree with William Herschel, very beautiful. What colors did you see? Could you split it? The colors might change when you magnify to a higher magnification. While we're in Bootes, let's have a look at a very interesting globular cluster, NGC 5466. It's apparent magnitude 9.7 and is six by six arc minutes. It's 52,000 light years away and it's over 13 billion years old and was discovered by William Herschel in 1784. It's the only globular cluster that contains anomalous Cepheid variables that are normally found in dwarf galaxies. To find it is pretty easy. It's close to the much more famous and spectacular globular cluster M3 in Canis Bonatici, but I covered that in a recent video. So you should definitely look at M3 because it's spectacular, but we're gonna look at 5466. Go to Arcturus and from there, Robo and NGC 5466 will be six degrees west southwest of Rho. It's interesting in that it's losing stars in a tidal tail stream that goes all the way from Bootes to Ursa Major, some 45 degrees away. You won't be able to see that, but you'll be able to resolve individual stars in this globular cluster with a telescope of six inches or larger at 200 times magnification. Let's see if we can see it. It needs to get a little bit darker. Be right back. Okay, to find 5466, go to Arcturus 
and then to Izar, and then across from Izar is Rho. And from Rho, you're going to head towards M3, which is halfway between Arcturus and Cor Coroli. And so halfway between Rho and M3, about right here, is 5466. Okay, I have to confess that took me a very long time to find <laughs> because I couldn't see it in my finder scope. It's not very bright. It it almost looks like a galaxy, honestly. I had to look at my star chart to make sure there aren't any galaxies in that area, but there aren't. That's it. I'm on it. Um, it's not nearly as bright as M3 not even close and it doesn't really look like a globular cluster it's more like a galaxy although i can make out stars in it with averted vision um, so to find it go to rho if you can see rho rho is across from azar not as bright not nearly as bright and from rho head towards m3 if you remember where that is it's halfway between cor caroli and Arcturus, and about halfway between Rho and M3, you'll come to 5466. It's very neat, very neat object. I don't think I've ever looked at it before. Hard to find, but keep trying, be persistent, because it's very interesting. And increase your magnification once you have it in there, and use averted vision to see if you can make out stars in it. Very cool object. Now let's move down to Hercules, which contains a spectacular globular cluster, M13, but I made a whole video about that beautiful thing, so go look at that. And I looked at Corona Borealis and looked at T Coronae, it has not gone nova. <laughs> it's supposed to go nova because it last went in 1946 and this is 2024, but it's still magnitude 10. Corona Borealis contains 400 galaxies, but none is closer than a billion light years away. So let's move over to Corvus, the crow. It's that trapezoid to the west of Hercules. We're going to find a planetary nebula, NGC 4361. And this is part of the Herschel 400 observing program. It's 3,300 light years away, magnitude 10.9, and it's 1.3 by 1.3 arc second. I'm sorry, I meant to say arc minutes. At the core of NGC 4361 is a very hot wolf rayat star, 270,000 Kelvin, but only 6% the size of our sun. It's large for a planetary nebula. To find it, just find the trapezoid of Corvus, which will always be low on the sky, and go about 3.5 degrees southwest of Algarab, or Delta Corvi, and it makes an isosceles triangle with Delta and Gamma Corvi. Use a medium magnification and also a UHC filter or O3 filter. You should be able to see the central star on this planetary nebula, and with a 10-inch telescope, you'll be able to make out a lot of detail. It's very cool. It's big. <laughs> Here's Arcturus, and this is Boötes, and below Boötes is Corona Borealis, and this is T Coronae, but it's too dim to see with the naked eye, so it has not gone nova, but there's... Corona Borealis, and I don't know why I mentioned Hercules. It's below Corona Borealis, but let's find Corvus by moving way west from there. Okay, to find Corvus, go to Arcturus, and from Arcturus, speed to Spica, and then from Spica, here's Spica, and here's the trapezoid that is Corvus. So face southwest, and these are delta and gamma corvi, and make an isosceles triangle with those, and 4361 will be there. Wow, that is really cool. What I should have said is it's large for a planetary nebula. And I pumped up the magnification 
probably well beyond the limits of this telescope. I didn't like the O3 filter. I thought it made it too dark. I put in a UHC filter and that helped, but honestly, I liked it best with no filter. And with no filter, at a very high magnification, I think 300 times, I could see the central star pretty well, actually. But this is a 10 inch telescope. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's a very cool object, very cool. We're gonna move over to Hydra, and there we'll look for a planetary nebula, NGC 3242, goes to Jupiter. It was discovered by William Herschel in 1785, and he thought it looked like Jupiter. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Jupiter. It's a planetary nebula, meaning it was a dying star that expelled its outer layer, like the other planetary nebulae we have looked at. It's 1,400 light years away and its apparent magnitude 8.6 and its apparent size 25 arc seconds. And it has a distinct bluish color. To find it, you'll need to look low on the horizon. It's also known as Caldwell 59. To find it, move west from Corvus to Hydra and locate magnitude 3.8 Mu Hydra and it will be 1.8 degrees south of that star, which is about halfway between Gamma Corvi and Alpha Hydrae. Increase your magnification to see more detail of this pretty planetary nebula. With a big enough telescope, you should be able to make out the central star. It's magnitude 12. Come on. So here is Corvus, and here's Crater the Cup. And go over, and that is Alphard, the brightest star in Hydra. And Hydra goes dink, 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 dink. So the third one is Mu, and you're going to go down from Mu to find it. I love the ghost of Jupiter because of the pretty color, and also you can make out the central star. But don't wait till late in the evening because it'll never be very high in the sky. And so if you're waiting till late, it'll be so low, you'll be looking through a lot of atmosphere and it won't look good. Last, let's look at something easy. A galaxy, M104, the Sombrero Galaxy in Virgo. The Virgo cluster of galaxies contains over 3,000 galaxies. But let's look at this one. M104 is an edge-on galaxy, 20 million light years away. It's magnitude 8, so beyond naked eye visibility, but you can see it in smaller telescopes. Although it's in Virgo, it's easiest to start in Corvus and head north toward Virgo. M104 is 3.6 degrees south of Chi Virginis. The core of the galaxy is bright and can be seen in a 4-inch telescope. A narrow dust lane runs through the middle, giving it a sombrero look. Nearby, also look for an asterism identified by amateur astronomer Philip Harrington as the JAWS. It might be within the same field of view of your telescope at very low magnification, 24 arc minutes west of M104. Four eighth and ninth magnitude stars, which make up the grin of the shark, and six fainter stars go north and east to make up the body of the shark, and then one star west marks the dorsal fin. Can you see this asterism at low power? Well, if not, enjoy the beautiful dust lane of M104. Does it look like a sombrero to you? Very cool. I find it easier to find the Sombrero Galaxy by starting at Gamma Corvi and going north. And it's in the same line with Spica. I think it's easier to find it that way. But whatever works for you. <laughs> Well, that's it for now of part five. What can you expect to see in your Dobsonian? I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.